Okay, so if you're like me, you probably found this video because you're having some issues with search in WordPress, and if you found it specifically because you're using tools like Elementor Pro and Jet Engine, then uh, there's a lot of opportunity there to do different things with those tools, but sometimes you find yourself in these weird corner cases, client asks you to do something, and you have these problems. So uh, my name is Mark Joe Szymanski. This is MJSWP. I like to talk about you know either technical things like this or agency topics. Uh, a lot of things WordPress and website related, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. But uh, today, what we're talking about, I want to make it as direct as possible. I'm going to tell you the problem that I have and that I had uh, based on a client request, and then I'm going to tell you how I fixed it. So um, I'm just going to jump right over into it here. I'm going to talk about the tools that you, I'm going to reference in this video. You don't necessarily need to have these tools, uh, but if you're already here, you probably do have some sort of smattering of these tools. Um, but I used Elementor Pro. I used I used the full this is my stack Elementor Pro the full stack of Crocoblock Jet Engine the whole thing and then also really really awesome tool if you haven't already heard of it and you use these two other tools Dynamic OO the Pro version really comes in handy for a lot of dynamic content and visibility stuff um, and things of that nature that I it's got me out of it's a get out of jail free card in a lot of different ways because it does a little bit more than the dynamic visibility uh, in kind of in Elementor Pro I'm not even sure how much they have but also in Jet Engine. Just really good, and we used it in this tool, in this in this situation. You might have been able to do it programmatically, but I'm gonna show you how I did it with this. Okay, the problem that I was having, I had a client site, they already had a blog, and they have uh, a whole like video library that they wanted to also have search for. So, the coming into this, this project here, there was a blog that I already created, and then there was a search box for the blog, right? So you have all the, the archive of the blogs, and then this right here, this, widget is a Ajax search from Jet Search, which is like a module of the Crocoblock suite, right? So if you're familiar with that, you can start typing in here and you can see like, you know, stuff that comes up, it gives you the results and everything like that. This is really cool, really awesome, would highly recommend it. However, if you click on one of these, it goes directly to the post. That's fine, cool. But if I'm somebody on this website and I'm searching, then I'm probably gonna click see all results, right? Now I'm not gonna click it here because it, it's already fixed, but if you're in this situation, you probably had something like this, you click see all results and you're like, okay, well, this is gonna take me to the search results page and it's gonna show me the search results for the blog that I already set up with a listing grid and maybe a heading and maybe another search thing or whatever. That was my issue. I had the blog was working fine, but I have another thing now. I have a video library, right? These are this is a custom post type. These are all like custom, like there's a video post type. It has categories, which is one taxonomy. It has playlists, which is another one. There's a lot going on there, right? And what I wanted to do was have another search, okay? So really, what I would love would have loved to have is two search result templates. But if you go into Elementor or if you go into Cro Crocoblock, either one, whatever one used to build like the theme builder piece, I would recommend Elementor. I make another video on that because I think you just do it all through Elementor. But um, regardless, wherever you go to do your templates, right, your archive templates, your single templates, your search result templates, there's not like search results for a certain post type or whatever. There's just search results. There's not really a way from everything that I've seen, looked at, and everything all my research and trying to figure this out, there's not really a way to do multiple search result templates. So now there may be a way to do like a different, you know, like query where it's like uh, question mark at, you know, S or whatever, and like do S2 or something like that. We're not getting that deep into this. This, this was just a, a quick way to f solve this problem that took me a little bit to figure out um, with the help of some people on the Crocker Block Forum. Thank you so much, Miguel. Uh, so, uh, so back to it. I had this issue and I needed to do this. So again, if you searched in here, you press see all results, it was the blog stuff. But then I wanted to do it with, with the videos and it was just a problem because the listing grid was different and everything like that. The content wasn't populating correctly and um, it was just, it wasn't working pretty much. So I'm gonna show you, cause you're probably in a similar situation. This is how you get like the same effect, but you only need one search result page and you can do it with a little bit of um, creative dynamic visibility, okay? So what I am going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say Apple. Okay. So if I click it, if I search Apple on the blog here and I press, you can see there's three results. And if I click on see all results, it takes me to, this is obviously fixed, but I'm going to show you what I mean here. 
it takes me to the blog. Now this was working again, like basically like this when I just had the blog. It has these are uh, this is these are listing items within a listing grid, and these listing items are specific for the blog, right? They have the featured image, they have the date, they have this. You can understand that if I tried to do this with a video, it might have populated the video stuff in there, which isn't the same fields and everything, which is weird. It it was just it was not working very well. And then the other thing is again, how am I going to search each one independently? Works great. I will, I will stop and say it works great within the widget, right? We're searching because you can set this independently on the that actual Ajax widget, like this Ajax search widget. You know what I'm talking about. If you click in here and you're editing this, there is a button in there. It says like, um, it says, what is the source of the things that you want to filter in there? And that is, you can put it as multiple, you can put it as one or whatever. This other one on the other page that we just did, this, is set to blogs and you can see it if I put the same thing in both these are three blogs that have the word Apple in it and there are no videos that have the word Apple in it right so I'm assuming you're to that point because you've used that before um, but the but again the issue is like it, it works fine if they populate there and they click on them but how do you do the search res the, the search results so this is our search result page now for like a blog that, that pops in here what I I'm gonna skip to the part that like actually was the was the key and that was this huge ass like parameter or I, I guess it's I guess they're all a bunch of parameters I'm not exactly sure but this query string up here in the, in the URL right so if you look right here at the very very end it says post underscore type blog and that I'm assuming I'm not 100% sure but I have to assume that that is coming directly from the thing that you set in that widget because that's all we did was it just carried over the settings of the things that it was populating in the little Ajax drop down into the search result thing. And I didn't even realize that until I did some more digging around. So it has it right there, right? Let me show you exactly what I mean though. If we go back over here and we type in, this is the video one, right? So if we scroll up here, this is the video one. If I, if I type in finance in the video one, you can see there's supposed to be six results, right? And this again is a bad example because it's working now, but I'm gonna show you the difference, right? Look at the difference between these two search pages. They, they're actually the same page. They're both just the search results. I'll show you how to get to this in a second, but if, when you're doing your like research and like in my debugging phase, I was looking at or I was looking at up here. This one came from the blog and it says post type blog. This one came from the videos and it says post type videos. So I was like, mm, well, uh, that might actually be the ticket to what I need to do, and it ended up being that. So I ditched the idea of multiple search result pages. You don't really need that. So what I did was we're gonna jump into the search results. Uh, like the editing the actual search result archive, okay? This is what I went with and you could go with something different if you wanted to. The only issue with this is you have to, you would have to get really, um, di like you'd have to get really deep into the dynamic visibility if you wanted to make this a little bit more intricate of a layout, right? If you wanted, you know, certain headings for, uh, for, for the, when the, when there was a blog one, it's really this, it's literally the same template. It's just, there's literally two containers and they are dynamically visible based off of that, that parameter that we had in there. So this is like the actual solution here. You have a Elementor um, search results template. So you can see like it's a template, it's an archive, it's set to be search results, right? That is standard, look that up if you have never done that before, but that is, that is all you need. You do not need two, it's, there's nothing special in that part. The only special part is right here with the dynamic visibility. So what I went with, and again, you can play around with this if you want, I went with a heading. The heading is uh, an archive title. So it's gonna say search results for, and then it's gonna say whatever they search for, right? So in this case, it says finance, in this case, it says Apple, right? And those are two different, again, those are the two different things. The next thing that I did was I made two containers within that, just so it was a little cleaner for the page design and everything like that. But I did one interior container and this is also, I did it as containers so it was easier for me to do the dynamic visibility on the container rather than all the individual elements and everything. So what I did in here was I did a, a, uh, a widget, an Ajax search widget, which is actually a global. I set it, I set, I went over to the blog and like everywhere you see the, the blog search widget, it's, it, I, uh, you know, right click, press save as global so it's in the global. Uh, widgets thing there. I did the same for the video, the other one, the video library one. That's just, you don't really have to do that, but it just saves you time and makes it easier because they're always going to be the same no matter where they're at. So I'd recommend doing it. So um, 
So then they always have the same setting. So this blog one, no matter it's here or the blog has the same setting. So I put that in there. Uh, ignore this right now because I'm working on that. When I figure that out, maybe I'll tell you how to do that, the, uh, the query result counter for this specifically. But then down here is completely, again, part of the magic. It's a listing grid. It has the blog post grid, which is, or the, the blog post listing item, which is this like card layout here. And it is set to archive template, extremely important. And do not use a custom query or any of these other, you know, the, the legacy stuff there. Just set it as an, as an archive template and then uh, you'll be fine. Whatever is queried, you'll see in there. Then down here, I'll give you the, the idea, I'll give you the concept down here and then we'll talk about the dynamic visibility piece that, that brings it all together. Down here, another container, same type of thing. It's just a different Ajax widget. It's still global though. It's global to the videos rather than global to the, to the blogs. And then these, um, this listing grid is the listing item is these video listing items, same setup though, literally copy and paste, just change the listing item. Right. And this is, you know, this is like a view of that on the front end. This is the listing item as opposed to this, but this grid and this grid have the same settings. They're just dip. The only setting that's different is the listing item. Okay. So hopefully we're, hopefully we're all together here. Um, now this is the last piece. So you have all that. And if you, if you do that and do no dynamic visibility, it's actually going to work. What's actually really interesting as a quick aside, if you did that, all of the stuff would show up on the screen when you searched, but what you would get is you would get something that looks like this. Let's say you search the videos you for finance, you would get something that looks like this. And then the other one would still be there, the other grid, but it would just be the videos as opposed to like blogs or anything. It's not going to search blogs, but it's going to search, it's going to search videos. And like, it'll look weird, like I said, because it'll be like trying to add the video content and the video me video meta fields into this thing. You know what I mean? Like whether it's the title or description or whatever. So you can play around as you're, as you're you know building this. But my point is that it worked like that. So then the only thing that you need to do is just hide the one that you don't want. Right. And the way that I did that was I went into the container. So I went into my, this is our blog one, right? This is our blog search result container. You can call it whatever you want. Right. And I went over to in Elementor. If you have dynamic OO, you can go straight over to visibility here and you turn it on and I pressed show. And the only one of these we need down here is context. And what I did was I went parameter post type, because if we go back for a second, we have post type up here, right? In both of these ones, we have post type blog or we post type videos. So you do post type and then you do parameter method. I literally just left it on request. There's other ones, but I just left it on a request and it worked. Um, and you can play around with these if you have a slightly different thing that you'd like to do. But what I did was equal to blog as the parameter value. So the way that I interpret that, and hopefully I'm right, hopefully it works. So hopefully it's like right, is this parameter post type when it's equal to blog, show this container, but when it's not, it's not going to show it. Right. So then that means that when it is blog, when it is searched from the blog, from that jet search, then it's going to show that. And if it's not, it's not right. So then you do basically just the same thing, but you apply that, that, not that, uh, logic to video. When you click down here under this category, or I'm sorry, this container, you go down to context and you say post type request equal to videos. One super stupid thing to point out because I, I've made this mistake before is this is this like this, it's going to say it in the thing, but that's like actually the slug of the, um, of the post type, right? So maybe your slug is videos, but like you think it's video, like just make sure that that's right. Cause it doesn't give you a drop down or anything like that. Just make sure that that's right. Um, and play around with that. But assuming that's the case, now you literally have search in multiple different places for multiple different post types. And it doesn't just have to be two. It could be more, more than two, but you only have one search result page and you can do it with the dynamic visibility. And you don't need to mess with the actual query itself. Like you don't need to like, I'm not sure if you could do this. Maybe one day I'll figure it out, but like, I'm not sure if you need, if you can actually change or make another, you know, um, string like query string, like question mark S two or something like that. You don't even do anything crazy like that. It's just all through those three things. So I really hope that I explained that uh, well enough. Um, I, I do think that if you found this video, you probably uh, were kind of already in the mix of all this, but um, that's kind of long and short of it. That's how I fixed that problem. 
and I'm really happy about it because now we can have multiple searches for multiple different things and actually show the appro show it appropriately on the search result page. And uh, there's probably again other ways. I've actually messed around in the past with uh, Elementor, like the query filter in the in like the posts widget or whatever. I'm kind of past that now with using Jet Engine. There is that's the last thing I'll say is there's probably other ways to do this. I'm sure probably more programmatic ways, probably other tools. But I'm telling you that those three those three things, Elementor Pro, Jet Engine and Dynamic OO have been able to do some crazy stuff. And I'm happy that this ended up being relatively straightforward because I didn't want to necessarily go deeper um, than I really had to if I didn't have to, right? So um, if you guys have any questions, I know I ran through that, tried to run through that really fast. And I know like I apologize because like I normally do things after they're done. But um, if you need more help on that, please leave comments down below. I'll, be, I'll do my absolute best to help you on that. Uh, but hopefully this was valuable. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, please make sure to click the like button there. And uh, I thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. As always, I'll talk to you in the next one.